Welcome to the podcast that absolutely no one gives a shit about. Hey. Uh, yeah. I'm Will, William, Willie, whatever you want to call me. People, I have literally like seven different names. And then I'm joined with Jason. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's been really long. I know. The fuck have you been doing? I know, it was always like, I got shit to do, dude, or like, honestly, like, I just didn't feel like doing it, but I'm actually kind of really glad we're doing it right now, because or else, like, I would have literally just wasted my time watching stupid YouTube videos all night. Dude, yeah. you can waste your whole life on YouTube, and that is why I've been committed to doing things productive, whether it's making music or learning a new skill or learning a new piece of history. I'm always trying to be active yeah, these days, like, as I, opposed I, to... I, bullshit (laughs) right yeah exactly and like it's 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 an easy trap to to get into because like it's so like 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 this is like it's literally designed to get you like especially not necessarily the videos themselves but just like the algorithm you know like it's almost creepy how it 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 can like it it knows exactly what you want and what you're gonna want to like and i won't even necessarily click on it i'll just be like Oh, that looks cool. I'll put it in the watch later thing. Like, ugh. <laughs> you know what? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll just like I won't even watch the damn video. Like, I'll just see it and then I'll just be like, oh, oh that looks cool. <laughs> this is like, what? I don't know if the statement I'm about to make is has any validity to it, but I remember back when those really shitty games like Candy Crush or Jetpack Jarred, all those iOS. I hate those. Yeah, like when those first came to prominence, I remember. Somebody was like, oh, the people that make those are the same people that are in Vegas that make the casinos. They're designed to be so addicting, blah, 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 blah. So I wonder if that's just how it goes. Is people's whole job is to make sure that YouTube videos, Facebook, all that shit is just addicting as possible. Oh, yeah, but at the how... same token, yeah, you it's, going. you know, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, I I don't know. The, actually, my favorite thing about the YouTube algorithm is when it picks a random video to play <laughs> that's like from years back and it's some random fucking video and a lot of people really (laughs) like it and it's just from nowhere yeah that's awesome yeah and like you never know what you're gonna get honestly that's the other thing that's cool about it yeah but um no i yeah the only stupid bullshit that is not wasting my time i would say is filthy frank he will always be a legend it's so funny to me. I watched this I shit know. Like four years ago, and you're just now getting into him. It's fucking funny when he's done. No, yeah, I know. Like, no, like I was, I was into him like way back, like back when I was in like eighth grade, like, like mm. at, at his peak, you know. But then, at, like when he when he officially started his his music career as Joji, and then like Frank was kind of dying, and he was kind of just becoming more Joji. But like. I I remember I like which is when I rewatched all that stuff. It is so goddamn funny. Like the funniest no, thing was uh was people even, like when they didn't just like <laughs> when they didn't know that he was filthy Frank and they just got into him because of his music and then they learned out who he was before and they were getting fucking triggered about oh, all yeah, the shit. Oh yeah, and knew. then yeah, because his stuff is like the absolute most offensive stuff like ever. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like with each passing year, everybody was like, yeah. oh, you can't do this piece of comedy now or you can't do this. And it was like semi-recently. So it's curious to, or I would be curious to know if something similar would have come out now, if it would, if it's past its prime already, if it's just, you know, if we've gone too far into that kind of sensitive loop. I don't know. Like, like, what do you think? Like, if that came out now, which I mean, it wasn't even really that long ago, right. like all of his videos, like he's literally like shitting all over everyone like he's he specifically said he was like in my videos everyone is equal as in everyone is equally discriminated against i think he could do the majority of the same stuff but i mean i feel like if he dropped the end of the f-bomb now then it would be a lot harder for that or he would like if he tried to start his career like if he was really famous for making videos and then he made a video like that i think that would kind of be the end of it but since like he's you know it's kind of behind him and he mainly does music now, and it's kind of a thing he doesn't do anymore. I think is part of why he's fine. But I think if he tried to, like, if he be, like, he became famous for doing that, and then just dropped those sh- bombies, then I don't think he would do well. Yeah, but, but I still think he could do the majority of the same shit that he did years ago. 
But yeah, that, that's the thing though. It's just like it doesn't matter what he's doing now. Like what he did, like it's cemented. Like he's a legend. Yeah, I remember. I mean, my humor has kind of changed over the years, but there's some sure, sure. <laughs> some one liners of there that makes me fucking just smile on the inside. I hate all the gross shit though. I still can't do that. Like I can't watch hair cake or vomit. Yeah, because yeah, I, I know how you it. are like physically uh, yeah, to that, towards that stuff. Like you have a very like like sensitive like stomach, is what you said. Dude, it's bad. Sometimes <laughs> I can't even wash the dishes without gagging. I used to put a chip clip on my nose to oh, do the dishes. Damn, that I, I feel really bad. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I, yeah. That's why I don't want to have a kid. I don't want to. I'm not looking forward to that fucking diaper exchange. Yeah, I'm really not. F- <laughs> feed my children. <laughs> feed my children. <laughs> oh my god, I could quote Filthy Frank all day. He's so funny. I know you're no, fucking. You're on. You're you're teetering that autistic line for me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm quoting them all day. <laughs> no, like, like part of me would like to think that that stuff made me dumber, but at the same time, I'm like, honestly, no. Like, honestly, like I'm just looking back at that. Like, it's just so fascinating, like where we've come as humans in term of in terms of comedy. Yeah, and like his stuff is funny on like the like the fifth level irony like it's so hard to explain why it's funny but like it you just you get why it's funny and like, yeah i get i mean the thing that i liked about him back in the day was i mean not all of it was but i feel like the majority of his stuff was satirical like he was there is a general you know i like i like punching down or punching up depending on how you look at it of like you know like very trendy things that people do or like any specific trends i just like when there's a counterculture with it and I just like when it's being challenged and I don't know I, I feel like my favorite example was when everybody on YouTube was doing the pranks oh like that was yes. the hottest shit to do was like YouTube that pranksters video he then, made where he's just like yeah hey is this a Chinese restaurant yeah well fuck you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, you his prank video I, yes. <laughs> I like shit like that I liked when I mean I consider it punching down because I thought that like the YouTube pranks were like you know the scraping the bottom of the barrel for content so like it was oh, easy yeah. to make fun of those guys because it was just so awful and it yeah, was, it was so like, regurgitated. Like, like gone sexual, like yeah, exactly. So oh, I, like every video had that in the just in the um in the title. It was just oh, gone sexual or um, oh my god, yeah. like so flow Antonio. Oh, that guy's yeah. infamous. Yeah, shit like that, which is actually funny to me to consider it punching down because you're making fun of them in that right too. Which is like even to consider them punching down. But then down, he's also so like bad. pranking them, which is hilarious. Like he's yeah. actually going like. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, are you, are you girls in art school? Yeah, well, that's fucking stupid. You guys are wasting your life and your money. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, I, I, that's that's the stuff that I really enjoyed from not just like the shocking, edgy humor that he was known for. I, yeah, because he's actually like, dumb. yeah, because he's also making a point, kind of like South Park. You know, because South Park like is edgy and stuff like that, but it's not just edgy f- just because like he's he's like South Park's m- making a point about society and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm saying that's that's the difference between just like dumb humor and just being really over the top satirical. But it's crazy because like that's how I used to view SpongeBob. I remember watching SpongeBob back in the day. I really liked it, but I did. I remember when I was younger, I felt like it may be ten times dumber. And when I've watched a couple episodes back now, it's like there's a lot of references in here that are really fucking clever, and I actually really like some of the storyline. And I watch like newer cartoons now. And it is just fucking lazy and mindless, and the animation is really shitty. Oh it's, my god, it's dude! It's crazy. I could, I could go off for like two days worth of podcast of like how bad cartoons, how most just generic cartoons are. Oh yeah. my god! But then like, like our shit, yeah, our shit from our childhood was was really stupid, but it had a lot of dynamic to it. These days, it's just fuck. I mean, it's just obvious money grab. Yeah, well, well, here, here's um, here's actually something with me my mom she never really like she never really banned us from watching cartoon network or nickelodeon she just kind of didn't really like it and she kind of just implied that she didn't really want us to watch it so me and my brothers and sisters we just kind of respected her wish and we we never like i mean we i mean my brothers and sisters thought it was stupid and because they thought it was stupid i just thought it was stupid as well so i never really watched it when i was little i just kind of just stuck to disney channel and so my my SpongeBob is Phineas and Ferb, pretty much. I like Phineas and Ferb. 
Does your mom do it from like a religious standpoint, or did she just think it was that stupid yeah, that she, she didn't just, want yeah, you watching it? Yeah, she just it? thought it was stupid, and she just thought it was really annoying. And I mean, she has a, she has a point. Like a lot of like, I mean, all the stuff that like SpongeBob is saying, and like his voice, and like all kids that watch that like imitate that. I, I can see how she she thought that, and like, I completely understand that. And it's I can watch. It, it is now. kind of annoying. Oh, I mean, yeah. I know, but now I'm sure like I enjoy it even more than I would have enjoyed it when I was a little kid. Because you understand what, like I said, it's the references that they throw in there. I mean, yeah, There's like some I, shit that I don't watch it. Like I don't really watch it that much. I haven't even really seen that much of it. But this, the the ones I have seen, I have like, I, I, they've been pretty funny. Like I like the um, anything with like Squidward, with, with like SpongeBob and Patrick. Oh, that stuff is hilarious. Like yeah, I when, liked all the messing stuff. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like, how do you guys not realize that Squidward like fucking hates y'all? situational irony yeah or like the no and also like just the memes like the the spongebob meme culture <laughs> is just uh it's i could go on about that like all like the spongebob in the hood that we thought was funny when we were in like six <laughs> and then they got well it's true there's a spongebob meme for every aspect of life oh yeah and then there was the squidward choking on a fork for 10 hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't know i mean i feel like it's kind of a broken record of you know most media being lazy today and i don't know i it's i i used to like because i used to be really into animation that's kind of what i wanted to do when i first went to college so or i'd I say am. i mean i can't do it but i'm just interested in it like just watching. well to do it right it's very difficult oh, and that's the yeah. one thing that i've learned is that like the reason why that shit is lazy is because it takes a lot of time, effort, and money, and usually teams of people. Because I remember, I don't remember what it's called, but there's this one uh, organization, or, or there was something, and they basically promoted independent animators. And they're really cool. A lot of it was 3D, kind of like a mixture between that, that claymation and sort of that computer-generated stuff, or a mixture yeah. of them. So I really liked that. There was like short little movies that they had, and I'd watch independent films for animation. It was really cool. You know what this is um, called? Because this sounds really interesting. I don't remember. I'm sure if you Google independent animation contest or something in that realm, you'll find them. But I remember they were very, very creative, and it was really inspiring to me. And it sucks because I used to love animated movies, and now they're just... Oh god, they're fucking... I mean, there's some, there's some that are cool, but the majority of them are oh, just... Oh yeah, like you know, now... Um... Like I think Illumination, it, it, the 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 company that made, um, well actually I think Despicable Me is their exception because I I enjoy Despicable Me because of all the memes now. Oh, it's, it's yeah. it, that's great. Like all the El Macho memes. Like, yeah. Somebody's gonna die tonight. Oh, that's, that's great. Like yeah. my I, my senior year, me and this guy in the the back of the classroom, we just quoted and memed like all of despicable me just like for the whole year it was great <laughs> the only thing i remember from despicable me is the um i i say i still say this to this day all the time i don't know why just randomly the i can't remember what movie it was in it was when they were on the pier and the little girl on the stuff and i was like it's so fluffy i'm gonna die i say that shit all the time oh yeah that was my like i remember this i i forgot who like someone in my life like that was their text tone really yeah i don't remember who it was or like why that's just what it was it's just funny how i remember these kind of things oh shit no but despicable me like actually has a nice story because like i liked it yeah i like despicable me i the animation is cool i didn't think it was lazy it just wasn't my favorite i don't no, know i don't I, like that that illumination style because you know they they purposely yeah. make movies for like the cheapest possible they can make them right but i don't feel like that was despicable me's problem i just didn't like the style of it but i think well, yeah. it was well made I, th I thought the animation was well done i didn't think it was lazy i just think i just wasn't a fan of the art style yeah, but i'm trying to i'm me, blanking yeah. now on i'm trying to i think claymation is probably my favorite type of animation like box trolls or like Nightmare Before Christmas, stuff like Ooh, that. Yeah, I think we just to me watched that, that, that me and my family just watched that for um for Halloween. That is a it's a yeah. it's a good movie. I mean it's it's not like one of my favorite movies ever, but like it's it's yeah. it's just it's fascinating and like my dad who had like I never thought he would have liked this. He was like, Man, this is so like creative and he thought it was hilarious. 
Yeah, I I always thought. I mean, not just really Tim Burton, but like I said, that that animation style. I've always loved came or claymation, like Wallace oh. and Gromit. Yeah, stuff I, like that. Oh, Wallace and Gromit is genius. Yeah. I have not seen that in forever, but I'd love to go back and watch it. Yeah, also, I always um, thought that it was good. What's oh, Fantastic Mr. Fox? I love that movie. Yeah, that's good. I like that style too. Yeah, I'm trying to think of 2D ones, and I'm blanking, but I know one of the ones that I really liked was um treasure planet and all the atlantis movies i don't think i've ever seen that i think i might have seen it like way long ago but i i have no memory of it i heard it doesn't really age well really i I don't i've never seen it so i wouldn't know that's just what i've heard i don't know i i like i'm trying to think i I mean it's been a while since i've seen it i heard like there's one character in it who's really annoying Oh, I'm blanking. I'm I don't. To I, just, I think I it was. Know. Oh, it was. I think Robin Williams played an annoying robot in that movie, but that's only oh, like later Robin in the Williams movie. Robin Williams was annoying. I love Robin Williams. Well, he played an annoying character. I didn't yeah. really like that character either. But the rest of the movie was really good. The story was good. The animation was beautiful. What is it about? It was, like I have no idea what it's about. It's basically like Gilligan's Island in space. It's like space pirates. Like this dude goes on an adventure to find some treasure planet and he gets basically, you know, fuck, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. He gets marooned, not marooned, what the fuck is the word? Fucking mutiny. He gets trying, I, dude, so he gets I, don't, I don't even against... fucking, yeah, he's like, uh, okay. he, he finds out that the captain's not a good dude and then the cook is like the mastermind behind this mutiny and shit, but it's a really good movie. It's like space pirates and um, okay. The way that they do, like, they basically, they use solar sails and then make them look like, like futuristic pirate ships. It's pretty cool. I just, it's like the animation style where they were kind of messing with, like, semi-3D, so, like, making 2D animation more textural, stuff yeah. like that. It was, like, yeah. the beginning of when they first started doing that. Right, yeah, you're talking about those um, 2D movies. Um, all those De- Disney Renaissance movies I really like, except Pocahontas, yeah. that movie sucks ass. Yeah, I didn't like Pocahontas. The animation it has some good or the songs, but other than that, I I, I hate it. It's really bad. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of the Disney ones like that I didn't really like. I think the one I really did you see El Dorado? Was that a Disney one? That's Dream or the Road to El Dorado. But That's I DreamWorks. don't know if I've seen that. Like, there's a lot like of these movies one. where I might have seen them a long time ago, but I don't have any yeah. memory of them. I would really like to watch it though. You should, man. They're all classics. Oh, well, I guess Prince underground of Egypt. classics. That movie kicks ass. Which one? Prince of Egypt, dude. Oh yeah, I do like Prince that of Egypt. That movie too. is the shit. Like you were saying, like the animation does like during the plagues, it looks so cool. How you like see like this just a swarm of locusts and then like all of the frogs coming on, like the warts on everyone, and then just and the, you see the yeah. Pharaoh's face and then Moses' face. Uh, it's so good. Have you seen any of the Atlantis movies? I don't think so. Those ones are really fucking good. Oh, okay. okay. I highly recommend them. Yeah, that's another one where I might have seen it in the past, but I have absolutely no memory of it, and I would like to watch it. Yeah, I they're they're definitely good. Then I mean, I, I I think for 2D, I like more of the realistic sort of animation, or like the really cool glowing colors, or just very creatively drawn and captured scenery. I think that's kind of my main problem. Like, I don't mind the over-the-top, goofy, like, big eye to, you know, cater to the mass public. But I just think the fact that, like, they made it their mission to make everything so uniform. Like, everything looks the fucking same. Like, there's no cool scenery. And I think that's the hardest part to capture in animation is your background. Right? Everything. Yeah, like, are you talking about in the Atlantis movies? No, I'm talking about... Well, I mean, yeah, I like the back the background scenes in those movies are fucking cool. I'm talking about, like, it, that's the hardest thing to capture, I think, in animation is your um, perspective, I guess. Oh, yeah, and that's or what like, Prince of Egypt really gives you because you see all of those, like, huge Egyptian backgrounds right. with the statues and and the, the city and the desert, you know, and all, all that yeah. stuff. I think that, that It feels more cool. vast. You feel more, like, invested in the actual story because you actually feel like you could be a part or it's like a mystical land to be discovered and it's very well done yeah, and i feel like with new exactly. with new animation like they have really cool sometimes cool drawn things and cool colors and stuff like that but it feels like you're watching something on i can't explain it, it just it feels very just flat even though it's very flat. lifelike that's a great 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like it technically looks better. Like, you know, like from a graphics standpoint, I guess. Yeah, but, exactly. But, but, like, but it just has no flavor. Yeah, exactly. Like it loses that. You, like you know, video like video games that come out now, they look fucking amazing. But like, they're just not gonna have that same. Uh, uh like, yeah, like flavor, like you said, as as a game, like, um. You know, you know, like like even Halo One has a great flavor to it, even though it doesn't look real, obviously. But like, who gives a shit? Yeah, I think Halo Three is probably the best out of them. Yeah, Halo honestly. Three looks very nice. Um, but that was the same thing. Like you felt like you really invested into the fucking game because of the way they had the maps. Like it was everything was very well like drawn out and everything was so cool looking. Yeah, and it was everything I never, from those hours interactive. Right. I never played through the entire the entire Halo Three campaign, but the missions I did play, I, I do feel the same way. Like you felt yeah. like you, like this is important, you know. Like I'm the master chief, you know. Like I'm, like literally like leading the armies of man like against the the covenant and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I like that about the Assassin's Creed games too. I like Ooh, the scenery yeah. and like some of the older ones. Yeah, they did a great job um, with this. I, that's what I liked about the Caribbean one, where you could go to oh, like yeah. Cuba and then you could go to Jamaica. And you could also like go to the Bahamas. I thought that that was excellently done. Yeah, I you see this. What I'm saying. I, I think that's what a lot of stuff is missing. Is just the I, either I don't know, that like, or like they have a bunch of just empty space. You know, like like right. a, a lot of open world games that I've played. They just like they seem so big. And I know people would say this about Assassin's Creed. I might not necessarily agree, but like it, people say they a lot of games like just. It's just a bunch of empty space, and there's, like, nothing to do in it. It's like, well, it looks cool, but, like, you know, what is there beyond the... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, games only going to be as fun as its playability, but I just think, exactly. for me, I enjoy being a part of, like, scenery. I, it's weird. Oh, yeah, I, have, like, a I, thing I would kind of be like that, too, yeah. I feel like something's wrong with me, like, in real life, too. Like, I, like if I'm in a room where I don't like where things are placed, or, like, if I'm sitting in a direction I don't like, like, it'll physically cause me discomfort. Like, it's weird. I have a really weird attachment to, like... Huh. Geog- like geography and how things are placed i don't know why what do you th- then what is your favorite shaped country not like i'm not talking about like um well, like I, how things are shaped i'm talking about like, like things well, like yeah, in relative no, location kind of to each other off of that I, I don't know i don't really have a favorite shaped oh, okay. country <laughs> i, don't know, I feel like greece is pretty question. cool because it has like a bunch it just looks like a big sneeze or just like a bunch of fragments oh yeah it's very cool looking but then, no, like I just Cyprus on the eastern part of the Mediterranean, right? But like sometimes, like when I like, for example, like if I, I have an affinity to like being like on the east coast. Like I feel like if I was looking out from the west coast on on the other side of that, like if I was in California staring at the ocean, it would like make me feel uncomfortable, even though they're like prettier beaches and larger waves yeah, and better but it's scenery. Just the Pacific, like just knowing that, like yeah, it's like that many miles on the other. Of abyss. Yeah, it's just like on the other side, but this one, I don't know why, it makes me feel better to be staring out of the Atlantic. I just I can't explain it. It's just I I have just a sensitivity to how things are positioned and where I'm looking at. Yeah, it's just knowing like, oh, like England's right there and then, you know, you got like Spain. Well, cuz like I might my, my thing is I love like the Mediterranean and I love how like you know like the old world so it's like Africa, the Middle East, like everything, like oh, all yeah, like the best like parts of our Europe history is all, yeah. Yeah, so, like, the fact that I'm, like, facing that, too, I think that's a big part. Of it. And I like Asia, too. Like, there's a bunch of parts of Asia where I feel that. But for some reason, like, I just don't – I just – this causes me uncomfortable just to look outside on the West Coast. I don't know why. Is it just kind of, like, a fear of the unknown or just, like, a – No, I just don't like where it's placed. I Like okay. I said, it's a visual thing for me and also, like, geo, like right, right. knowing, like, where stuff is and, like, which way I'm looking and what – it's, like, what places interest me. So, like, if I have no interest in something – I don't want to be pointed in that direction. <laughs> right. It's very weird. Right. Which is why I like watching like some movies and like I like seeing stuff with like vast scenery or it's like a really cool captured thing in a scene. So it's like I like looking in that direction in the movie even though I don't know where things are placed. You know what I mean? If it's like a fantasy world or if it's not yeah. have any relation to real life. Does that apply to you for paintings? Yes, it does. Uh, Anything yeah, okay. visual, it applies to me. Yeah, like if I don't like I, how a perspective is in a painting or it's like if it's like really cramped and like the like they have like a window or something on the something it seems like the outside would be more interesting to me than what's in the painting like that really bothers me. Oh yeah, cuz for me when I'm watching 
and this is related to that like in a movie the the biggest thing for me is like the presentation and the presentation yeah. is consisted partly of the cinematography and the cinematography is like where things are placed how they're lit you know like what what the overall frame looks like and how, how it comes out right. to be and it's like if that sucks if it just looks like bland you know like just five out of ten movie you see on tv then i'm like i'm, I'm like sorry i'm not gonna like this movie like it's just gonna yeah. be that much worse you know that's why i don't like the marvel movies because they look so ugly and just bland. i don't mind some of them i i like some of the visuals on the marvel movies especially like it's like some of the space so, stuff. some the of them plans. yeah like thor ragnarok looks yeah. okay like you can tell that yeah, they I mean, were doing I, something yeah, I mean, some of them. Like, I my biggest problem with those movies was like the acting. I always thought the acting was cheesy, but I oh, liked the jokes. The, and I liked like, the okay. special effects. Yeah, like prime example. I fucking hated Aquaman, but I loved the oh, visual effects. In are Aquaman. you kidding me? I loved that movie. Yeah. In like, I mean, okay, I I know it's not like good, but like I thought it was just it was fascinating. I was like, oh, like, yes, like, like it's entertaining it was... and like it's. It's like self aware, but at the same time it isn't. And like it's funny that it is and it isn't. And then I was like I yeah. like Jason Momoa. I thought he was cool. I do too, yeah, I like him. I think it just felt like a breath of fresh air. I liked how it was shot. I love the special effects on all the weapons and all like the creatures and all the worlds. Oh, yeah. Like I I thought that was I love I love that movie for that. Yeah, like a thing that this guy that this that this video was that uh, this guy was talking about it, he pointed out is like in the um in like the room with Willem Dafoe, like the lamps are a jellyfish. Yeah. Like that's just a creative little thing. I'm like, oh, that's cool, you know? Yeah, I love that shit. I yeah, love like, how was everything was glowing. To, yeah, and it had that like that Tron Legacy kind of get yeah, glowing kind of vibe to it. Yeah, that's well. I mean, I don't watch movies in IMAX anymore, especially since COVID. But that one would be really cool to see in 3D or IMAX. Or I, IMAX is all 3D, I think too. Yeah. I want to see it is. I, yeah, that'd I, be really fun. I want to go see Dune. Have you seen any of the ads for that? I have. It's crazy. It was like I, tr- like people have always recommended Dune to me. Like people always try to get me to read the books. Yeah, and I, I have a book. I, I have the first book. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, I feel like if I read it when I was younger, I would really enjoy it and be really excited for them. I'm still gonna watch it, but I don't know. It's just like I don't know if we've talked about this before, but I used to love reading. I used to kind of get that same sort of feeling with movies where it's like I can visualize the perfect scene in my head Mm, just from the like just from the writer's words. And that would kind of be that comfortable space for me. I could, you know, I could visualize things that I liked from the book. But these days I don't get that visual in my head and I can't even read like two pages without losing my attention. I think it's just because of all the neon lights and colors that we have as a society now or just the fact that music. I I can't get into it, dude. I can't. I've tried. No, just try something light. Like, try, like, um, I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, you've already read Harry Potter, right? I actually have never read the books. I oh, okay. For school, okay. when I was in elementary school, they had this thing where it's like, if you read a book and took a quiz, they gave you, like, points, and the Harry Potter books were worth the most points. So oh, I nice. just was like... I barely passed the little quizzes because of the knowledge I had from the movies. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's, so that's I never so actually read the books. <laughs> but I don't know. Like that's, I that's pretty like nice. I said, I, it sucks. Like I think it's more discouraging because like that magic of creating a scene in my head from a book has been lost and it's kind of been overtaken by music. Like I get visual scenes and I make up stuff in my head from music, not from oh, books. So okay. I think that's kind of been... One, you know, once my brain gets a new stimulant, it's kind of hard to go back to the old drugs, you know? Hmm. Like, like for me, so when I, when I read The Alchemist, have you ever heard of that book? I feel like I have, but I don't think I've it's read a, it. Yeah, it's, it's a Brazilian novel. Um, okay. When I, so I read it last year in Spanish, and I just finished it um, about a week or two ago in Portuguese, the original text. Um, like, I felt like I didn't get that, where, where I was, like, trying to visualize what it would be like in a movie. Like, I didn't visualize that. And it seems like it would be the kind of book that could be adapted into a movie realistically. Because, you know, a lot, there's a lot of books where, like, it just it doesn't translate well into a movie. But this book could be. But, like, I wasn't really thinking about, oh, this is what this scene would look like and this is what that. I was just kind of visualizing this in, like, a whole new, like, medium. Like, I was still visualizing the things but not like a movie it was, it was really cool and it's hard to explain right and i do mm. recommend reading it it's it's 
pretty good. I don't. I've never read it in English, so <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever tried? Have you ever tried to um to write your own stuff or like, like kind of like create your own scenery or create your own world in that way? In like for when I'm reading something like this. Well, just like if you get that sort of excitement from books, obviously you're you're exploring more into the music territory of creation. But I'm saying, right, like, right. did you ever, or have you ever interested in writing something, like my own story, like fiction? Oh, yeah. absolutely. I've I've, well, I've tried to write several stuff ever since I was like really little, and I failed. Mm. Um, I wrote a story in Spanish for my, um, for my project, like for like my, my f- class project. Right. And like looking back at it, like I need to edit it. I made errors, and like also like the story is just really cheesy and generic. But um, I mean it it was it was literally for school. But like honestly, the story like even if it's cheesy and generic, it's still like nice, and it's something like I could you know. Like like there's there's nothing you know like offensive in it or like it's just it's a nice message that like most people like it's just about this guy who like he's like a dick to his wife. He's like a dick to his kids. Like doesn't give a shit about them, and then he, like he loses his job, and then he has to like work in like a shitty job and then he like learns to like appreciate things you know so it's just... more well i guess yeah not really a fable well i guess it's, I, I always can't remember if a fable specifically uses animals or it's like any yeah, story with a moral lesson yeah there's some kind of yeah i i, th- I want to say a fable is like something that uses animals as if they were humans where like they're talking and stuff Right, but well, the whole thing is just to have like a moral question come yeah, up, or I think have that's some sort of yeah, lesson like, learned, um, like Aesop with the yeah, the fair and the the turtle. Oh, the Looney Tunes yeah. thing of that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. the Looney Tunes is great. Yeah, that's cool, man. I um, I did like a couple of creative writing. I think no, well, I don't know. Why I said a couple. I did one creative writing class when I was in high school, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, but it was I wasn't cringe. like um, I, nah, I don't know what you wrote. <laughs> <laughs> no it was fun i mean a lot of it was cringe a lot of it was like angsty poems well, not not me writing it but a lot of people in the class did angsty poems i liked more of like the short stories like i liked um writing things that you know like i tried to get that otherworldly angle where it's like writing things that you know have no bearing on earth but seem kind of familiar you know yeah what I mean? like i'm i have thought about writing something new like just some yeah. story that just like you know only i can think of you know because like like tolkien yeah. he's like middle earth is like his like he feels like he's the only person in in the world who's been there and he's like come back to tell us everything that's happened and everything he's seen yeah. kind of like that and like i'm just just thinking about you know like what i want to write and if, if there's anything i'm a sucker for like everyone has that story trope or story kind of idea or arc that they're just like a sucker for if if any of if i'm a sucker for any part of a story it's like that one last go kind of thing or or like a just just one more time i can do it you know like 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 i got like something to prove yeah like something to prove or 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 like it's like a character who's like been in a lot of stuff like they have already had several stories to flesh them out and they have one last like you know what i gotta do this one more time you know like uh the um the dark knight returns which is i think that's my that's my favorite comic ever, I think. Hmm. It's just about Batman, like, you know, he's like he like he's depressed because like Robin's dead, the Joker killed him, and he's not Batman anymore, and then he's just like you know all this stuff's coming back and like, you know he realizes the Joker's like escape. He's like you know what, like I I gotta go do this one last time. You know, it's so good. It's crazy. I think every movie franchise, either with like it's a show or a sequel, has that moment where it's like, you know, it's like the main character, the protagonist is down in the dumps and they have to find something that has the yeah. overarching sense of, I'm going to go, you know, I can do this. Like they have to get the spark back into them. Yeah, no, and that's why, like, like I yeah. said, I'm a sucker for that. That's why I love Luke in The the Last Jedi. Yeah. I thought that that was awesome. Like, I, I, I loved his character. I loved how he was like he wasn't how he expected him to be. How he was just like a he was a miserable asshole, and he's like, guys, I'm not like this space wizard that you think I am. Like I'm just a dude. Like <laughs> leave me the fuck alone. Is that your uh, is that your guilty pleasure when it comes to stories, or do you have like a more kind of quasi one? Yeah, well, I, I don't know. Hmm, guilty pleasure because like 
that movie's really interesting because there's a lot I actually like about it, but then there's a lot that I don't like about it. Um, yeah. But if the, the, I more mean like a like a cheesy trope yeah, in a movie, yeah. you're like, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I used to like Transformers One. I haven't seen it in a long time. I do like Transformers. The, only the first one, though. Yeah, I thought the first one like had cool like 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 it had like enough of a story so that like you can kind of care right like as opposed to like the other ones like have like absolutely like nothing going on in them interesting <laughs> but um oh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think like i mean I, yeah I, I guess that that trope can be cheesy so i guess you could say it's that one like the one last time kind of thing you know which one i really I like the one cheesy trope in movies that i fucking love for some reason mm. I love like um, I love like I can I don't even know how to explain it like without being sounding too generic because it's like a specific style of this trope that I like and I can't put it into words but I love um. I love, I guess not romantic movies but I love like romance scenes in movies where like it has like a, like that genuine scene where they connect on something and it has like it's usually like something like cool scenerized in the background or it's very dark and quiet you know it has like that very relaxing vibe because it reminds me of like the times that i've had that stuff in real life so i always like those I tropes can't relate to that <laughs> i'm ta- well you know what i'm talking about though right like you know like sharing like no, those intimate I, moments yeah but i i i've since like i've never really had that i really can't relate so and like i've never really well, do liked... you like long for it like do you see it like in a movie and like long for it or is it just something that you just don't have any bearing because i mean it hasn't happened? i did when i was a simp but I'm no, I I am I I tell thee today I am no longer a simp so I no longer did you go MGTOW bro do you red pill oh, oh, oh that <laughs> wait wait you you mean like being a Republican or just like no no I mean because there's like, like the different you... p- things that people mean by that it's, it's just like the no I know I mean like have you like given up on like trying to center your life around like dating somebody or oh, are you definitely. just like in the notion where you yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, if, if it happens, great. But, like, I'm not going to... You're not to, looking for it? Yeah, like, I'm not going to actively seek that because that's stupid. I see. And you're, wa- like, you're wasting so much of your time. And, like, you could be doing so many great things. You know, Choosing like your career over women. <laughs> well, okay, okay, it's not exactly that. Like, I still, I still <laughs> no. eventually want to, like, you know, get married and have children and pass on tradition. But... At the same time, that's the only reason you want to get a woman's to pass down tradition. Okay, like as okay. a cultural thing. It's that's part of it. It's not everything. <laughs> What's the other part, Will? <laughs> to be with someone that I genuinely love. <laughs> okay. Like how most people are, but at the same time, I'm like, all right, is this person, like, am I actually gonna genuinely want to? Marry this person, or am I just gonna want to hang out with them? And it's like, okay. That is the big moral question is whether exactly. or not you want somebody just to fuck or if you have someone that genuinely enhances your life. Yeah, exactly. Which is why I like that trope in movies because in movies it seems like they actually have a, like a mutual benefit to each other's life. And that usually never works. They go separate ways. So it's like the one thing that could have been forever, but it just got away. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I don't know. Have you seen, like my favorite, I'm not, I don't really like romance movies, but uh, my favorite one is her from 2013 do you know what that one is i haven't seen it but i think i've seen yeah it's trailers it's like joaquin remember, phoenix yeah. he um he falls in love with like the the android girl on his computer <laughs> i actually have to watch this yeah, no now. I forgot it's, it was that it's it's so like it sounds so stupid but like you feel it and like you like it's so it was so fascinating to me how this guy could like actually be invested in like a like a robot and the robot was like invested in him like it was it was really good and like you and like you genuinely like felt like the you know and like obviously like they're, they're just they, they can never actually be together because like she's not an actual person yeah. and like it's just kind of sad in that way too you know yeah that reminds me of um do you ever watch black mirror have you seen any of those no i've not seen that so black mirror is really do you know what it's about i th- just just fill me in on it Basically, it's a bunch of different stories that some of them have loose connections to each other, but 
the premise is like it's a dystopian future but not like dystopian as in like machinery and lasers and future shit it's like technology has gotten to the point where it's so overabundant that it always takes precedent over human relation or it makes human relations so awkward and so uncomfortable um so it's basically just like a bunch of different like moral lessons it's kind of like fables sort of in a weird kind of way but it has like a different story to every episode and like one of them's like it's like a social media platform has basically gives everybody a ranking and you can kind of vr like you if you walk in the street you can look at somebody's social ranking and basically everybody's lives is constructed over the social ranking and then this lady has bad luck and then that's what she everything she viewed was important then she basically gets lower ratings and lower ratings and she basically sees how hard it is to function in that sort of society with a low rating it's it's like stuff like that that's like but um in real life yeah exactly but they take it but that it's kind of dystopian in that way but the one right, thing that i like is um they have a lot of like genuine moments like that like one of them was really sad where a woman her boyfriend or her husband died and there was a company that could like download all of his like mind and his memory and all that shit from all this online content and put it into like this um this like half android flesh sack thing and to make basically a copy Ooh, nice. of like her dead um partner and basically it it goes like the stories is her realizing how just it wasn't the same and just having to like missing that general connection and just how she still can't live without this thing and it has like like it's it's pretty sad and then also there's one with like um this online dating thing makes you like date people in real life and then you can only date them for a specific amount of time and then you have to move on to the next person Oh. kind of thing so it's basically Wait, is this an like it had a bunch of, no it's a real life sh- it's um real life oh wait, no no i'm thinking of black butler that's an anime <laughs> never mind, never mind. No, no no yeah yeah black mirror is a british show but it uses it's not animated it's just real life yeah, it's just, yeah live action yeah, yeah. Oh, no, i, I sounds, recommend it, it's it on pretty netflix? good yeah it's on netflix yeah, this sounds really cool yeah i mean some of the episodes aren't that good some of them are I don't remember. I can I can shoot you the list of those two that I just said that are really good. But there's also another, a lot of them that are really good as well. But some of them are kind of lacking because you know okay. you have a different story for every episode. Not all of them are going to be good. They're but there's connected. a few episodes. Like they're all different, right? Like it's different characters mm-hmm. and like. Most of them are connected. I'm trying to remember. It's been a minute okay. since I've seen it. I think some of the episodes, like, I feel like the technology that they use in all of them is very similar. Like, it's like, cre- like their universe, it's created by the same company or created by the select few people. So the technology is kind of the same, even though, like, the stories are sort of unrelated. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, but yeah, I, there's would like one... like, I would like to watch this. This does sound pretty interesting. Yeah. There is one where it's like um you can like if you're dating somebody you can like block them in real life so if they try to come to you there'll be like this gray fuzzy outline oh, hey. their speech is muffled <laughs> oh that's yeah that's cool that that sounds yeah really cool yeah yeah it's a very very cool show I like it yeah I just I love that yeah like the kind of cleverness you know yeah it's a very clever show yeah I st- I started um. I watched the first episode of Squid Game, and I really want to watch the second one. I, just, I already finished the season. Yeah, yeah. Don't spoil anything, cause I I do want to watch this. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it. Yeah, so I need to finish that, and then I need to finish Narcos. The just the first Ooh. season of Narcos. Narcos is good too. I love the way Narcos is filmed. Yeah, and I love all that that Colombian music that's in it. It's very good. Oh, you know what, Will? I so and when I'm going back to like animation and how like um you know, like the independent thing. So there is actually one show on Netflix that gives me that like independent animator kind of vibe and the whole thing is a bunch of short stories about really cool also dystopian stuff too, but it's all 3D animated and some of it's 2D animated is Love, Death and Robots. I have heard of that. Very, very, very beautiful animation I have and heard really of it, yeah. interesting storylines. Like okay. there is one storyline where um where like you can't have like everybody found this elixir to life and you live like hundreds of years and it's illegal to have children. So the earth is overpopulated. So oh, it's basically okay. it's a detective that his job is to go hunt people that have children and they're supposed to kill them, but he's trying to like unlearn it and shit like that. But they're very short. So they're, yeah. I think they're like eleven minutes or something, but 
because the animation is so good so the episodes aren't that long um but it's a different story every time there's one where like this woman's household appliances are trying to kill her and she's trying to survive her own house and stuff like that it's pretty cool like overall yeah oh yeah i i I have seen that on netflix and it's been it's looked interesting to me like do you have a favorite work of dystopian literature or just fiction i guess i don't know how i would say that i don't know about are you talking just like for books anything uh i don't i mean the, the dystopian thing is not really my favorite oh, okay. it just depends okay. on how it's it, it just depends it's it's ironic that everything i just mentioned was dystopian that's literally i think the scope of it for me like right, it's right. not i think it's because it's been overdone kind of thing but oh, i yeah, liked like um, the early two, 2010s like just young adult novel dystopian stuff Ugh, that stuff is yeah. gross actually i think in terms of dystopian i think my favorite piece of art i would say is uh trigun it's an anime from the 90s i've never heard of that it's it's about a gunslinger that it's basically it's it's kind of it's not steampunk but it's it's kind of steampunk but it was back in the time where it was more acceptable to do because it wasn't overdone but it's basically like a dystopian western about this like futuristic gunslinger that he's basically cyberpunk no, cyberpunk is more like futuristic. Steampunk is more like old style with futuristic kind of stuff. Oh, like Cowboy Bebop? Yeah, okay. stuff like that. But it's about a gunslinger that he basically gets wrapped up into dangerous situations. And he has like a strict code of conduct where he doesn't want to kill anybody. And he can solve a bunch of problems without like... He like he has a gun, but he, he always like fires shit. And like he doesn't kill anybody, but he fixes things. Um, and like the background of it's really cool and the scenery is amazing and the characters are really cool and this one's trigun trigun okay no yeah i I would would really like to watch those yeah the theme song's dope the the animation is phenomenal the scenery is really cool the the drawing and the art and all the guns and all the stuff is very creative the characters are pretty creative and like his origin story is like alien and that's it's like a lot of cool stuff so it's like i I gravitate towards like otherworldly stuff like that where it's like vaguely familiar to our culture but something completely new entirely. Kind of like um album covers. Like I love that about album covers where it's like a bunch of weird things mashed together that sort of resembles something but it's also just piques your interest. Or it's like very mystical. Yeah, I like a lot of stuff. Like, like what's that. your favorite album cover? Oh man. Dude, I <laughs> fuck. I like a lot of stuff that Mastodon does. I like their album covers. Um, a lot of the psychedelic and Doom guys that do like watercolor painting. I like Gojira's album from Mars is Serious with the whale with the different like planets in the background. There's a that. band called. You should look it up. It's a really cool okay, album. Sure. I should listen to it too. I was remember I was mentioning it on the last podcast, but that's a really good album. Who are they again? Um, Gojira. Gojira from Mars okay. is Serious is the album. Okay. Yeah. There's a band called Latitudes, which is really good, and they have an album called Old Sunlight, and it's like a really cool watercolor of a like a man looking up, and it's just the way that they've done it, it's just very otherworldly. I just I like I like kind of warm colors and very like smooth gradients and stuff like that, or vast open spaces. So I like or like when like mythical creatures. So like when an artist draws something really weird looking and it's really cool and flashy. So that's why I like a lot of album covers. They kind of give me that feeling, and I think it's also why I gravitated towards music because the music can kind of relay what's on the album cover for the most part for me sometimes. Yeah. That's why I hate when like I um, like a song and I hate the album art because it almost ruins it for me. Yeah. For me, I, I think like, um, cover art for an album is the equivalent of like a title to a movie. Cause like if a movie have a, has a stupid title, like you're just, it, it, it can have a big effect on it. Right. Like, um, well, I, you were talking about the psychedelic um, stuff. I really, I love the album cover to Lateralis. Yeah. And also if 10,000 you, Days. If it's funny, it sucks that you don't have this, but if you ever go to like a used bookstore and you see those albums in real person, you should get it because the album cover in 10,000 Days is cool. It has like a weird kaleido, not kaleidoscope, but weird like um, kind of like drunk goggle thing where like they have a bunch of different artwork and you can look through like these little goggle things and it can kind of change and make it a little more Ooh, trippy. And if you cool. close the album, it like it it looks like the glasses for the lateralis face. So it's like there's a bunch of cool shit in there. Yeah, the lateralis it's like a little that I see at Barnes and Noble. It it like it doesn't have the same cover art, which I was disappointed yeah. by. 
But I mean, I'm still, yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm, gonna buy it anyways. But I meant Ten Thousand Days on that one. But the latter hours, the the latter hours album CD was cool too because like the sleeve, it had like um like the energy kind of thing like of the guy, and then if you took it off, it was like the blood vessels and the and the bones of it, and then when you take nice. off that sleeve, it was another layer. So, like, they had a bunch of cool visual stuff on their CDs, which is nice. What is, like, is there a story behind that cover and, like, why they put that on there? Do you know anything I about don't that? know the, I don't know the story. I know that the artist, Alex Gray, was, like, a friend of the band and, like, he does, like, the majority of their art. And he does a bunch, he's kind of pretentious. He basically, like, I don't know, I, I guess he considers himself, like, a modern-day shaman or, like, he sees beyond whatever and then that he reflects that in his paintings so like he gives his paintings a very deep spiritual meaning but it's just like they're just paintings the, and he's just trying the to be only dicky. person who deserves to say that or like the i am beyond this world and just writes you know stuff like draws stuff from that is hr giger the guy who did all of the concept art um for alien and he he came up with the xenomorph like like this guy literally had like nightmares and he would just wake up in the middle of the night and just draw what he drew i mean like i, I mean i mean draw what he what he saw in his nightmares and he actually like if you look up his his work like he's a really interesting artist i, I believe he was swiss um he drew like a lot of this like anthropomorphic like alien human stuff and like pseudo sexual yeah. imagery like 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 with the xenomorphs and like all this it's really creepy yeah. some of the stuff he drew and like he, he drew this one i like i forgot the name of it, it it's just like a bunch of dicks <laughs> like in a row and it looks like like artistic you know yeah he created a whole universe for himself would do like that's why like I think every it like if you listen or if you have the chance to listen to any artist or anybody that's created like a super popular universe that is copied or you know known and loved by millions and the majority of them just started some from some weird fucked up dream. I'm that's why I'm super excited if they ever have the technology to like play our dreams in real time and you can see because like there's sometimes I have dreams where I just. It's just like really cool scenery. Like and you can kind of really visualize trippier. it, and then like when you wake up, you still kind of remember it, you know? Yeah, and it, yeah. And it has that very, for lack of a better word, that dreamy sort of landscape. <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's it's like yeah. me and you both know what it is, just because we we know, but like we, it's really hard to describe what it is, you know, because we don't we yeah. can't see in the same way that we have in the dreams, you know. Which is why I can't wait till we can eventually do that. But have you ever had those no, dreams that where kind of scare you're... me because I don't want to see what other people's dreams are and like all the fuck. Oh, I do. No, but all of like the I'm waiting fucked for it. up stuff that that is in dreams. You know, how creative that's gonna be though. No, but like at the same time, like I don't want to know what's like going on and like, uh, maybe if it's just like oh, some random so dude who like who like volunteer, but like I, like people that are close to me, like I don't want to know what they're dreaming about. That's weird. It's just like the like reading do. minds. Like I don't want to be able to read someone's mind. I don't want to read someone's mind, but I definitely want to know what they're fucking dreaming just to see. Because like that's the most personal thing. Like you can describe a weird dream to somebody, and they're not gonna get that perspective because they can't visualize it. And you like the only reason why it really affects you really good or really bad is because you have that visual attachment to it. Like you ever have those dreams where you are in a place that's like every place that you've been to or like a lot of places or it's like your house but it's not really your house it's a bunch of other places you've yeah, been to that's kind, kind of, kind of in like your house. you're in like the you remember in lord of the rings when like he puts on the ring and he's in like the ring wraith world like yeah. it kind of looks like that and it's like you're at your house but like you know yeah yeah like or it's like you can walk like um like you or you're in a like what i love about my dream sometimes is that like i i go on like walking adventures so it's like in one minute I can walk to like California and then there's one like, Oh, I have to go to Chicago. So it takes me 10 minutes and I walk over there. Like, like time is very quick and you can go yeah. a lot of places quicker in your dreams, which is what I really like. Everything seems so close together or they're mashed together. The same cause like I had a dream. It's like my grandma's house looked like this really cool amusement park that was near that I went to, but it's not actually in that town. Like just <laughs> like shit like that. Yeah, it's no, like, I can't, I want to see that. Yeah, It's so fascinating how these things like come together and, and then like and like yeah. i wonder if they're gonna figure out like if there's gonna be like a mathematical equation as to 
how you get the stuff in your dreams, you know? Like, like, cause we know it's kind of like a combination of what happened that day, what hap- what has happened to you overall in your life, and what, um, there was another thing. And, and I believe, yeah, wait, it's like what happened to you that day, and like what you were thinking that day, I'm pretty sure. Do you believe that, um, that dreams have your brain is trying to tell you that there's a problem that needs to be solved. So it shows you dreams to freak you out, but very specifically to kind of get your life together. I mean, yeah, I, I, I could be that way. I mean, cause you know, like, um, I don't, I don't know if you take any of this stuff seriously, but, um, like, you know, like Joseph, um, the King of dreams in, or I don't remember if that's how you pronounce it, if that was his name, but Joseph in the Bible, um, he was the 13th, son i believe of of jacob who is israel and his 12 sons created the twive the 12 tribes of israel jacob was um he was literally sold into slavery by his own brothers who hated him Um, and he was in egypt and he became the viceroy of egypt and he had all of these dreams um that he was able to tell the pharaoh how to do the crops and how to do all of this stuff and it led to all of this like prosperity because he like god was telling him what to do in the dreams it was so i guess yeah i guess you could so you kind of have that prophetic view of dreams like you feel like it has a greater purpose in your real life oh yeah and like i might not necessarily have had a dream where it's like oh this is god uh speaking to me but i'm sure that it that, that that is the case for a lot of people um well, not necessarily God, just like you, like you have well, something that's unsolved or unresolved, or you have some sort of purpose, or you have some sort of innovation that you need to explore a new feeling or new something from your dreams. Yeah. And then, well, yeah, what I was saying is like, um, you know, like, are they trying to tell us things? And I was saying, and I'm like, yeah, I, I would, I would say, yeah, I, I, I do think like I, I might have dreams where like God's trying to tell me like oh this is what you need to do. And I guess not like you know not everyone believes in God, but this is how I take it. Okay. And like what, what do you think about like do you think that they have like a greater purpose like you were saying? I feel like so I I feel like see I I'm kind of like I'm sort of <laughs> how i put it i'm i kind of go back when i talk about this kind of shit i always seem like i go back and forth because i feel like life just has that nuance where things have greater meaning some things don't have greater meaning some things are just random some things are designed to show you something or some things are just made for your interpretation i think that we are the creators of our own universe i think the fact that we are given the chance to create our own universe or to have free will in whatever context that is that applies to you is kind of the whole point so i think if you are shown something in your dream and you get that feeling that it gives you a greater purpose or you're fated to do something i think that the fact that you choose to take it that way and you do something that's innovative or you do something that's really progressive or something that's really cool then that's kind of what i think is sort of the purpose i don't know I, i think things are cyclical i think stuff is supposed to happen for a reason but i think only embracing that randomness is why that happens so it's like when i see stuff in my dreams that i feel like i need to emulate the feeling or i need to emulate the atmosphere whether it's visually or through music or any sort of way that i have to live my life i think that's what my brain's trying to tell me is that like it knows that i need to you know experience some sort of higher elevated um consciousness not well not consciousness in like the traditional sense just like a like a greater feeling sure yeah and it's um yeah (laughs) i mean i mean yeah i just don't really know what else to say i mean you just you explained it very well you know what's crazy is i feel like i always talk generally or it's like i don't know how to say this thing or i don't know quite how to say this but this is a vague (laughs) interpretation of what i feel like i feel so fucking like, I, I don't know they put some bullshit in our food i feel like i have no clear thoughts anymore exactly, i used to be yeah. very i used to be i used to be very articulate like i didn't i don't say i didn't say like all the time i used better words i, know, I, I didn't forget the meanings of words falling into that trap 
and I can yeah, be dude, like I can be articulate about things that I really know about and things that I'm really passionate about, you know, like languages yeah. and stuff like that. And I just use yeah. like three times in the <laughs> fucking five seconds. I don't know if it's because like <laughs> because like I don't know if it's because like, I'm on like a I'm a I'm on like a rec- like fuck a, dude it's so it's so like hard. like a fucking like this a fucking like and subscribe it's, fucking like it like and like and subscribe. Mouse. Fuck, dude, it's so stupid. I don't know what because I I used to make I used to make fun of people hardcore yes, for saying like after the every best, word. Like, third grade joke, dude. Yeah. And now we're, oh. we're the become the very things we just we swore to destroy. I just chalk it down to all this bullshit in our fucking food and our media just causing everybody to be retarded. So that's why we can't talk properly. Pretty but, much, yeah. um. But yeah, I I think it's also because I'm on a podcast setting or I'm my voice is being recorded. So, you know, if I write something down and recite it, obviously it's going to have more coherence. Or if I actually take the time to research something not on the spot, it'll have more coherence and flow. Or if I have time to really think about something where I'm not just talking my thoughts out loud, I've had time to actually orchestrate them and yeah, come up with yeah. a general purpose and conclusion to what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but at the same time, like <laughs> I don't want to town. I don't. Sorry, I don't want to sound too articulate so that I'm just I sound like a robot, and like because like I still want to sound like me, you know. Yeah, I don't. I don't want it to be scripted. I like the. Right. That's why I like listening to podcasts. I like it having that raw feeling, and sometimes people can create really beautiful statements when they are unhinged or they just, you know, speak from the heart or just yeah, come up with something off the top of their head. Medium. Like just listening to yeah. two or more guys just talking and that's it. Like with this thing, like we don't have, I, obviously people can fucking tell, but like we don't have a script for things right. and we don't have a, we don't have any I don't have anything written yeah. down. And um, yeah, I, I just riff back and forth. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a musical piece. And I know I sound pretentious <laughs> as fuck, but <laughs> are we in a composition right now, Will? Or are we Bro, creating are a we universe? In, like, we're in D major right now. <laughs> Sucking on D's nuts. <laughs> what major scale did Anglo-Saxons talk in? D's nuts. Nobody knows. Good one. Fucking got him. Wait. Got him. Um, got him good. Didn't you say that in Vikings they speak Old English? Like that that TV show. They do. I like I said. I don't. I don't fucking know English. I don't know how accurate it is. But they try to put in a bunch of languages that would be relevant to the times. Right. I think. Oh, yeah. Old English literally sounds like German. It sounds more like um, like the Nordic languages, honestly, to me. Like it, well, those are also Germanic, too. Right. Yeah. They're, they're all Germanic tribes. Right. But well, I but mean, you know I don't know the, if they're all so, Germanic. So the Germanic the same is people. split into the north. Uh, west and east the right. north ones are like all those nordic ones that like that like that yeah. came from old norse like danish norwegian and swedish and then the east ones those are all extinct like literally they're all gone um it's crazy to think about how many languages have been are ex- or not have been have been and are extinct yeah like all these um semitic languages there's hardly any of those anymore like um like just well, cause oh yeah, 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 cause yeah. So, so there was tons of Semitic languages spoken in biblical times, obviously, but now like most of those people have just been like, you know, like most of the people we know now are just like these extremely bigger powers from other parts of the world, and like also these pe- like all of those like a lot of these Semitic peoples were like conquered by other peoples, and a lot of those people were Semitic, so then you know like like Arabic. Arabic and Islam like took over most of the Middle East and a lot of those languages kind of went away with that. Well, they also merged like a, a lot of language borrow words from yeah, other previous sure. extinct languages. So it's like, that's why it's, it's always cool to me to see like where the actual origin of some words come from. Yeah. Like I, I have a big etymology book, which I, I love to look at and you can see all of like the, 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 like where this comes from and like, all the way back to like the first thing that we know where it comes from. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. See that I that I could read. Like I I can read articles in nonfiction and informative stuff like that. Like I can really get invested into that sort of stuff. But it's the fiction that I can't really get into much anymore. But I I like oh, so, so I like anthropology. I like etymology. Right. I like learning where shit comes from and what's the like. It's always weird to me how we have to follow traditions or like just the reason why we do something is because one dude made it up before us. Like that shit was always cool to me. Like who like who 
is the person that decides to make up sounds and then other people right. you know it's make like, a how language do we standardize you know, like, this this like these writing systems and all that, you know and just like do we know like one guy that's made a language like they're so old like we have no idea who the who the fucking first person was to make like who you know who did aramaic who did greek like who did all that like who was the person that just decided to make up this shit that yeah other like people I, spoke like who, who it's crazy invented- to me Hebrew, which is dubbed as the world's oldest language, that's just kind of what it's called. It's, we don't really know. Yeah. Um, that like uh, that's what I like. I'm really wanting to know. Like, how did that start? And like, how did they get that alphabet? Where did that come? From? Like, you know. And I mean, I mean, I I, yeah. I I I do believe in Adam and Eve and all that stuff. But I'm like, I don't know if they spoke Hebrew because I don't I don't know like what they would have because just the language would have not nearly have have been developed yet. You know. Like it would not have been yeah. nearly to the level of what we can talk about now. So I'm just like, hmm, like, like what exactly were they speaking, you know? And and also like, in these times, like in in these ancient biblical times, like these languages were not really standardized the way we think of them now. So like there was a lot more, f- like, freedom and a lot more dialects and a lot more mutual unintelligibility, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'd imagine that a lot of people tried to make up their own languages and it was super tribal and I mean whoever was the biggest one won and that was the language that took over oh, yeah. or it merged from the old ones that they killed. So oh, yeah, that's how that's, that's what was crazy. Yeah, that's how English took over the British Isles. That's how uh that's how Spanish took over all of the well, most of the Iberian Peninsula. It didn't take Portugal. But um yeah, it's cuz like um the British Isles have a lot more languages than you think they do, but just most of them are just, they just are just almost completely gone. I think like old was a Gaelic Welsh. Yeah, like Welsh like, is like, still still has like a decent amount. Of, it's not not a lot of people speak um, well. Like only know how to speak Welsh. There's very few people who only know how to speak Welsh. They, it they, and there's yeah. been a movement to revive it. But also they had, you know, yeah, they had they had Scottish Gaelic, they had Irish Gaelic, um, they had mm, this like there's a there was a bunch of Celtic languages that were there like way before the Roman Empire, um, right. like the Cornish too. They had their own language. Well, you got to think too, like all of like the Germanic tribes, like the Anglo Saxons, you tell those guys they're probably speaking you know at most different dialects if, if they're even speaking the same language and then that bastardized into the old english so it's like oh, yeah. how did it get to the point where they all spoke the same variations of that language? obviously you know each region of wherever has its own dialect but having its own dialect where you can still understand you know what someone else is saying so it's like how did all those warring factions get to the point where they could all speak the same language or know, one yeah, of their languages like... just didn't survive and they had to combine the other two like i, I don't remember if it's just been like the most six i don't remember who yeah, the the biggest I, I believe the, tribe was i I'm, i believe it was the the anglos and they did they was it their dialect that was the most prominent or did they just all somehow have like a merger between all of them like that's what i don't remember because well, there, there was like I, i'm trying to remember like the, the, there was there was the anglo saxon there was the anglo saxons but then there was tons of other germanic peoples on the island of britannia like there was the scots and then there was the there was the the Britons or whatever, like those kind of those French peoples, and then yeah, like I I, I I'm Frank, yeah. I need to brush up my history on this, but like, uh, but what I do know is that that's that situation kind of happened in London, where like there was there was certain regional dialects of English, with like around London, but then like the the main one that we know now it just it just completely took over, because that's you know what yeah. the that's what the king spoke and they just spread it, and then you know they're like. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like before, they all got unified. Like how they got to the place where that was the co- whatever that was was the common language, and that you know, stuff like that has always been interesting yeah. to me. Just kind of because I feel like we're not ever living in a train. I mean, obviously, we're in a transformative time now where everything is moving super quickly, and and you know, ten years is a lot more progress than it used to be. Oh yeah. Or I maybe it's slowed down. I I think I just said that completely backwards. I feel like innovation is a lot slower than it used to be in ten years. Well, hold on. Hold on, I'm fucking myself all up. I think it's both. I think in terms of like life changing shit, the decades are slower, but in terms of like how 
faster things are moving and how much different technology there is it's obviously you know 10 years is a lot quicker in advancement yeah, but those... nothing really overarching or life-changing i think yeah it's the paradigm shifts is what they're called yeah. when those happen everything that came yeah, before like... it is now obsolete and now those are coming like a lot more often now with like technology yeah and, i mean you know like, like phones but... and stuff like that as far as major paradigm shifts, obviously COVID's going to be the biggest one for a long yeah, fucking it's a bunch while. Of bullshit, but you know. <laughs> well, I mean, it completely changed our entire. Oh like, sure, no, like, no, I'm not arguing with that. It's a huge paradigm oh, yeah. shift. Like if you were to tell, like if I was to like go back like three years from now and tell me like all the shit that's going to go down, I wouldn't even believe myself. Oh no, yeah, it's crazy. That, that's that's completely right. That well, or like I mean, I guess nine eleven. Um. 9 11. Oh my god, 10. I remember the. <laughs> yes, that would be 900 million. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong math, bro. Or like whatever it was, I remember. Like he just did the actual <laughs> calculation. And then. No, I remember it, it was the Family Guy 9 11 thing. <laughs> like, Peter was like, oh yeah, you know, 9 11 was so tragic. And Brian's like, Peter, you, you, you didn't even know what 9 11 was until. Two two months ago, when everyone started talking about it, and then it was like it was like flashback to two thousand one, like he's just like walking down the stairs, like like just glances at the TV with like the the two towers, and he's like, hey, hey Lois, I bet a woman flew that plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great euphemism for how uh, people just don't fucking you know know shit until it's a trend. Oh yeah, even though like I, I my dad was like, yeah, that that's not really that accurate. Like like most people knew. He was actually, I, th I think he was in the Pentagon, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I need to ask him again. Uh, um, I think my dad was supposed to go to the Pentagon on that day, but for some reason didn't get a chance to. What do they even to. do there? I have no idea what they do there. Like, wait, what even is it? At the Pentagon? Yeah, what is it? It's it's like all, like our, it's basically, D I don't know if there's, obviously there's probably other branches, but the majority of it is DOD, so like all the defense contracting, people go and try to fucking sell or buy guns, obviously. Oh, okay every intelligence thing so if they get intel then the, the, the pentagon is basically a big intelligence hub obviously they do a bunch more shit and i'm just like generalizing it's but where the team american I mean, the grand, headquarters is the, i guess the main purpose for it is just basically intelligence like okay. like most surveillance comes from the pentagon most data um and like all like the budgets they i guess they have like budget meetings or they the decide Illuminati. like you know the government spying yeah. on us from there they probably fuck kids in the basement of the Pentagon. It's where all they go. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do you like? Do you believe that but, like like the government or like big tech or whatever you want to say? Like, do you, do you believe any of that? Like that? Like the whole like they're spying on us. Do you believe in that to any extent? Oh, a hundred percent, dude. Fucking Snowden proved that with the NSA when they were like the. I don't remember what act it was where they basically promised or it was illegal to like they weren't going to spy on Americans, but that's basically what they were doing. Yeah. Tapping into phones and doing all this but shit. Yeah, like, like, that's but proven. Like, to what but, extent do you believe that it is that they're spying on us? I think they are doing bare minimum. So I think they are spying. They're trying to get our data because data science is what's popping right oh, now. Yeah, so yeah. anytime that, that, they I can get our data 100%. and sell to the sell to the fucking Chinese, they will or they get hacked. I. I only think that they go after people, like oh, and search results like and they, stuff like that. I dude, like I, I mean, majority of like the majority of the shit that you can go into is like for the most part a conspiracy theory. But there just have been too many coincidences with people being assassinated for whatever reason, where it's uncovering something that the government actually does or coming up with some new life changing technology that you know whoever's paying Congress doesn't want to you know like something big tech or big oil or coal or whatever like you don't yeah, want to like get out or if it's like it's... A, i guarantee you there's been like multiple people that have had a cancer um multiple people have probably had like a cure for cancer or some sort of life-changing cancer thing that probably have gotten killed like i 100 percent our government assassinates people and the reason they're pissed is because they couldn't get the snowden like that motherfucker would be dead if he ever comes back on American soil. Well, actually, probably not at this point. He probably would just just go to prison. But right. before, if if Snowden never got famous, I feel like he probably would be assassinated. Like our government just does that, like proven to assassinate people. So hundred percent think Maybe they're spying. I only think they're spying on high level people, but I think for modern day Americans, they just want our data. Yeah, no, but like, do you believe that like you know just like this computer I have right now, like the government's just like fucking looking at me? 
no, I don't think they care about looking into your computer. Like I said, I think they only care about what you buy, um, what your medical records are, and what you do for a living oh, and, and what, what your race is. And what you is. search on Google. They definitely look at that. Well... Well, yeah, I mean, it's all data. I think that's really the only thing they care about. I don't, they're not looking in your computer, looking at you, or trying to access your photos. Like, none of that shit. They're just interested in oh, what okay. you do because they want to make money. They're all about making money and submissions. So it's like they have to find. I honestly, I think the biggest advantage for them collecting our data is to figure out how to use fear to control, like, what to spread in the news media to freak everybody oh, out yeah. and what to, like, because, like, fear is a big codependency. So, because they, without fear, they realize how useless our government is. Like, they don't have any sort of... Like, it blows my mind that for hundreds of years... Well, not, I mean, I guess I'd say the last, like, 100 to 150 years in this country, how we have gone back and forth from, you know, Democrat, Republican, party switch, left, right, dumb, smart, blah, 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 blah. And you get people literally fighting and killing each other over what ideology is better. And both of them have never gained any sort of actual progress or innovation I'd always argue yeah, no, that every not, sort of innovative, true. like there's been progress. Well, here's a, hold on. Here's the thing though. Oh, okay, okay. Every sort of innovation has been watered down by government or any sort of true thing has been like exploited to the point like okay. Tesla, for okay. example, like Tesla's electronic system, like we were wireless before we were wired. Like his would have been, we would be a far superior race if we would have gone with the majority of Tesla's inventions. He just got fucking drained and sacked by Edison. And the light bulb was a shittier thing, but I don't remember how he got more prominence. He just stole a bunch of ideas. And then I guess the, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories about why the government didn't like Tesla. He had a bunch of, they were scared that he was, had like a lot of, lot of weaponizing technology that they didn't want to wrong hands. But the majority was like, it was very hard to capitalize off of what Tesla was trying to do. And it was easy to do that with what Edison was doing. So that's why it was a more favorable outcome because they could find a way to extort people off of his system better. So I feel like every sort of innovation that we have, even though like we're live for the most part fairly decent, comfortable lives, could be ten times better if we didn't have our government. I a hundred percent believe that. I mean, yeah, for me, I, I, yes, obviously, could this could this country be better? Sure, but like compared to everywhere else in the world, like this is kind of the best place you got. <laughs> You know, but right, which yeah, is no. such a staple Could because, be like, in yeah, their sure, in their countries but... too, like they there's inventors in all over the world, right? And there's like you know the majority of the world can't afford AC, right? Like, there's more right. power, but it's more or poor. Even there's more people in right? poverty. Like... Yeah, I think there's more people in poverty than there's people that are living comfortably. But I think like with every sort of government or every sort of bureaucracy, they have always watered down innovation to find a way to capitalize on it first. So like our lives could be like. We wouldn't even be arguing and fighting and killing over the same stuff. We, I swear to God, we'd probably be 100 years more advanced than we are now if we didn't have the government. I don't know. And not just our government, just like bureaucracy in general. So you're the an The way anarchist? that it is. No, I'm not an anarchist. I'm just saying the way that everybody uses greed and extortion to Frank water down everything. <laughs> like what? with the like anarchists and like the white rappers. He's like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. I'm bringing back... I'm white uh white rappers uh, the government is corrupt <laughs> yeah yeah no anarchy's fucking dumb too like it's just not that's what i'm saying like none of these fucking systems of government Monarchy, work capitalism baby. communism none of this shit works <laughs> like since the fucking greeks since they've created modern bureaucracy that fucking none of it works well yeah, but I mean, I think it only well, works well because people are distracted with all the shit that we have that doesn't actually enhance our lives. It just makes us comfortable for a little bit, but it also makes us numb. So, okay, so I feel so, like everybody's so like, take, like the the George Carlin kind of perspective on these things. I do agree with a lot right, of what George right, Carlin right. says because I, because I feel like he was pretty unbiased. Like I, I feel like I mean he was harsh and he was very cynical and very skeptical, but I feel like he didn't attack things from like a left or right angle. He always went after things that just didn't have any sort of relevancy or didn't make any common sense or he always pointed out the things that people argue about that they didn't need to argue about it's like you guys are fighting the wrong people like there's no need for all this shit that we consider societal norms as opposed to just being like fuck society i'm gonna be a counterculture anarchist and everything i do is contrarian like that wasn't the point the whole point was like everything that we've been taught to learn as a societal norm doesn't have any relevancy in the grand scheme of things it's just been designed to just be competent workers pretty much it's just 
obedience and competency. I, I, it's, I, I think I don't he had a, like he had a, that because that kind of devolves into Marxism, if you know what I'm saying. We're, we're well, no, no but, because Marxism is basically like you are all equal. You are all owned by the government. Your work value labor is only as valuable as you are able yeah, to contribute exactly, to the because greater that, purpose that, like, of makes it. Us, like, that like, puts human beings as like machines, which is basically what George Carlin is, is saying too. Yeah, but our society does that in a, in a very different way because I remember he had a line where it's like, in this country, like they want us like just smart enough to learn how the machines, but just dumb enough to not know how they actually work. <laughs> That's pretty much his whole point. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Like we're just smart enough to do a lot of like a lot of shit, but we're just dumb enough to not understand why we do it and then we don't want anybody challenging those sort of ideals. And that's not just with us, that's with every human society in general. Everybody that challenges their cultural norm is usually having like major pushback unless there's a large shift or it's been majorly exposed as something wrong. But I think like if you look at like if you look into like our nation's history and our foreign policy, it basically runs the same way. Like with the CIA basically training rebels to overthrow governments, like it's the majority of it is for a just solely greed. There's no other reason besides that. It's like you look like back in the fucking twenties while they had kids working in coal mines, like the only reason like, I guarantee you, if nobody challenged that shit, there'd be fucking, I'd be in the coal mines when I was 15. You know what I mean? Like, the reason why this shit only gets better is because people challenge this. So, this notion that if you challenge our government, you're going to turn into a communist or a Marxist, I think is just part of that propaganda. Uh, but on no, the same token, really a lot of people saying, do subscribe to those ideals, and they also fucking are Marxists or communists, and that's not a good system either. So, I, it's just a, it's just two levels of stupid that I just, I can't stand. Well, like, you do agree People with People fight me about which one's that, better. Like, capitalism is, like, infinitely superior to communism, right? I think that capitalism needs a lot more social nets. I think it's only a superior system if it gives, like, how do I put it this way? I don't know which system is more miserable to me. I think, like, since my life is comfortable and I feel like I'm pretty moderate, that I can kind of navigate a lot of the bullshit that is, is in this country and it doesn't affect me. But I feel like under communism, it would be harder for me to do that because I feel like I would be a lot poorer and a lot more right. like I would work a lot harder for less pleasure if I was under communism. Right. But in this country, I feel like it's also numbing in the other respect where it's like we have so much shit at the tip of our finger that everything is numbing. And I'm like miserable on that aspect because everything is you have to buy something. You got to buy, 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 material, trivial, superficial. Everybody's. I don't know. That's all. All of our popular music and yeah, all of our all of our popular music and shows suck. It's all fucking money grabbing garbage. It's all numb. It's all everybody talks like a fucking moron. Oh, no. Yeah, exactly. That's just the 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 popes have said. uh, many bad things like they've condemned both capitalism and communism but um you know the, yeah. their solutions to capitalism is widely different than marx's solutions but but, but yeah but, but yeah like basically um pope i forget pious that whatever i can't remember he, he was basically like yeah like capitalism like if you take it too far like it just makes us yeah like a numb and like we just all we care about is just like you know the new thing and like the oh, all this stuff and like we're all just carried about like yeah, yeah, the greed is what you what you were talking about. Like that that that's yeah. uh, that's like the biggest I, I think, thing. Yeah. I think the best way to sum it up is I'm a big firm believer in free market. I feel like you should be able to make as much money as you can doing really stupid shit. But I also think if you make ungodly amounts of money, you should have a social responsibility to make life better for the rest of the planet. I mean, that's kind of the things like I don't like how people are so content and so just like their whole life is structured around work and buying shit because that's basically what capitalism breeds is that you have to continuously work uh, it, to it, sustain it, it, this it's shit just, yeah it's just, it's just working for like to get more comfortability so that you can have more stuff yeah to which is just to make the only reason stuff, why that's yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, the only reason why that's even a thing is because they just need to make companies more money. Like, that's the only fucking reason. Like, you're only right. getting a sliver of whatever they're getting. And they're like, like I said, they just want you smart enough to work the machines, but just dumb enough to not fucking make your own machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they just, they need competent workers. And that's what I cannot stand about capitalism. But I am a huge advocate in the free market because I feel like it breeds innovation, but I also feel like it is prone to a lot of fucking copycats and a lot of shittier products and a lot of misinformation. So yeah. I feel like we just need to just, we got to find a way. It's just to 
revamp all this shit but still keep it free yeah that's why like and open like being from this country like it's just like it's a blessing and a curse because like the like the, the you know like the the struggle we have is just like the you know you know just like the overabundance of stuff if you know what i mean and it, yeah. and it's like you know it, it, it is it better like it, is it is it not as hard to get over like the struggle of just like the you know the system and like the the um you know like the stuff and just the being sho- being shoved down your throat or as opposed to you know like yeah. living in poverty or living in starvation like in you know like most countries that are not well off you know live in the other thing i can't stand about too is i hate how like majority capitalistic ideals fall around like you have to cut corners and you have to make the biggest profit right so it's like cheap labor and cheap bullshit products imported from china is always going to like take over anything that's well made or well innovated <laughs> donald, donald trump so it's like, like stop buying from china guys <laughs> Well, it's not even with that shit. It's just like cheap. Like it's not going to matter who says it. Like cheap labor, and convenience is always oh, going to win. Also, those things are literally made through like slave labor in China, with the sweatshops. Yeah, like, like that stuff that's is what awful. I'm... And like the products are shitty. They're mostly everything. I guarantee you, all the shit that's in them are probably bad for your health. Like that's why everybody's getting cancer at a younger fucking age. Like yeah, right. That's the one thing I don't like about it. Is like it just breeds all this shitty cheapness. It's like remember back when fidget spinners were a thing? Every motherfucker <laughs> was like rushing to like build oh them and like God. make them and shit that to sell them. Autism, I cannot dude. stand that. Or it's like you walk around the fucking world and every motherfucker wants to sell you a selfie stick. It's or just like, like I don't a, need all this yeah, cheap like a, like bullshit. Like a Fitbit or like a, any, any yeah, stupid new thing. Or like the Apple Watch. I'm like, why do you need that? You literally have the time yeah. on your fucking phone that literally already costs yeah, $1,000. This... Why do you need to buy yeah. another thing that like does everything your phone do? It just looks different. Like, <laughs> Yeah, all this cheap fucking garbage that we have is just useless. I hate it. And at the same it. time, I just, I like how, like, you don't have to do that, though. You know, like, like, you don't have to buy any of this shit. That is true. And that's that's ultimately why, you know, like, me and you, we've we've said, we've criticized capitalism a lot. But, like, we're, we're both, like, you know, yeah. at, the, at, at the end of the day, it's just nice that we can sit down and have this podcast, you know. Well, yeah. there's a difference between, like, criticizing to make something better and just all around just completely, like, taking for granted that the shit that you have are completely going against what you say because like there's a there's room for change for everything but i feel like nobody's like nothing ever changes nothing ever gets better like you, we do have the choice to do a lots of stuff and we do have the choice in this country to make money in the most ridiculous ways possible oh, yeah. but the one thing about economics is that like the more money you put into it the more money and more everybody benefits like the more the more the more amount of people that are able to participate in the economy the better everything is right the more people money investing the more they make better stuff the more the roads get fixed the more businesses happen the more money goes yeah, around yeah. shit gets less expensive more people are specialized in things like the more like the less poverty you have in a country is the better but i mean ruling classes don't want that they want really poor or really fucking rich they don't want a middle class they want people that are easily controlled like more people are becoming middle class now i would say no no it's not dude our middle class is dying Holy everybody's shit. becoming super fucking poor yes Sure? There is no thriving middle class. I'm 100. percent You look at the statistics of all, all right, that I'll shit. That again, it's like people are either that. getting. Well, it's like people are getting poor and the richer is getting richer. There's like the middle class is waning. Yeah. All right. I, that's I just how it's gonna go. Because like I don't really. But I mean, if there's a statistic. Well, look at okay. every. But I mean, yeah. I just thought it would. Look at every ruling class society. Every ruling class society doesn't have a middle class. It's all just super poor and super fucking rich. That's how it goes. And that's where we're going. A lot of people in this country are just like middle class and they can like, they can have a nice life. I agree, but that's, that trend is going down. Like I'm saying like shit's getting more expensive. Like jobs are paying less. People work more like cost of living is going up. Like it's like our middle class is dying for sure. Where you live in the country. Like what's granted but if you it's everything is raising regardless like if you look around like the whole entire country every shit's fucking raising everywhere and like we're right. we're basically inflating our dollar with all the money that the federal reserve is printing so it's like we're definitely going to lose value on that too so it's like middle class it only takes a couple of paychecks wrong to get you know into the yeah. lower tier so yeah right. voice crack yeah fuck but um but um i don't know at the end of the day i'm just like you know i'm happy with my life 
I'm happy like with like the you know like I remember like, I'm like really thankful for the um you know like the, the family I have and like how I have a home and like you know we can do this podcast and I can read all my books and I can watch all my filthy Frank and, and all that stuff but just but yeah you say that now but just wait you'll have to live on your own and fend for yourself and make your own money oh, and if yeah. you didn't go to college that's harder well, so you might not be saying that a couple of years and shit might be a lot harder and a lot more expensive so i would count your blessings now man I don't, yeah, but i'm just saying regardless <laughs> like, i'm just very thankful for the the stuff i've been given and i and i've been dealt a, a very good hand that i was not able to see in the past no, it's good. I'm, I mean, it, it's a good thing to have appreciation. It's a good thing to have humbleness and kind of be grounded in that way for sure. But it also, it's like, just because you're comfortable in that sort of life doesn't mean that it's going to be the norm or it's going to be like that oh, no, forever. No, it's not. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'm just imagining my, my, my family who was in Germany that whole time thinking it was great. And then, you know, the Nazis came you know like you have yeah. never i mean like i don't know like the nazis could literally take over this country in next year and i'd be dead you know like I just, you have absolutely no idea what's gonna happen yeah but that's why yeah it's you know uh, you never know that's what i'm saying like the more you look into history and the more you understand how government works and the more you understand who's actually paying for all the shit and who makes the decisions and who owns the shit and the more you learn about foreign policy and how stuff just came to be and how much the media lies and it's just it's hard to have any respect oh, yeah. and that's it's hard why, it's kind of easy to see how this shit kind of falls into that's place why the, that's why the only authority figure i respect is jesus and i know you're probably gonna be like oh great well not the, but like you know I'm, that's this is kind of how i look at it <laughs> you know what it reminds me of i i don't remember where this was i i this might not be a real thing it might have been a meme but i think there was some pastor somewhere that he said basically that Jesus wouldn't have been crucified if he had an assault rifle. <laughs> I think I saw a tweet about that. <laughs> I don't know why. That's why that reminds me of that. But, but anyways, I think it's about time to call it. All right, yeah. We're leaving it at... It's getting late. The, the government is corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck, I guess you're waiting for the second coming. Oh, I am. <laughs> to cleanse the I earth. Mean, I have no. I have absolutely no idea when it's gonna happen. I am not a Seventh Day Adventist who believe that it's gonna come like, you know, now or like in the imminent future. But I really have no idea. So. Well, get your lightsaber ready. About to fight some demons. Ooh, ooh, that'll be epic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was. It was yeah. great doing this podcast with you. Yeah, man. That's catching yeah. up. See ya. See ya.